What's going on guys? I don't have any time to mess around today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, a couple of articles real quick. As for the Bitcoin miners, any Bitcoin miners you like for the rest of this cycle, now is the time to buy in my opinion. Whether it's CleanSpark, whether it's Iron, whether it's BTBT, whether it's Riot, whether it's Mara, take advantage of this short-term fear. And here's the first piece of news. Standard Chartered subsidiary Bank Mox starts offering Bitcoin ETFs on its platform, and this is coming out of Hong Kong. And it's official now, you guys saw this news earlier. Morgan Stanley is now allowing 15,000 wealth advisors to sell Bitcoin ETFs, and this is the first major bank to do so. Today, on Wednesday, Morgan Stanley lifted the gate on letting its roughly 15,000 investment advisors sell Bitcoin ETFs to clients. Trillions of dollars in portfolio holdings among the largest banks now is in play. And according to a Pantera Capital analyst, the shot of the starting gun is largely flying under the radar. I think this has totally gone unnoticed by the market. The Bitcoin ETFs have drawn in quite a lot of flows year to date, but if you talk to the large issuers, they've only turned on, call it about 10 to 15% of their distribution. That is where a lot of the capital exists. So I think this unlocking is getting from 10 to 15 points of distribution to 100 points of distribution eventually. And all these wirehouses are a huge piece of that. So them turning it on is a massive deal. Now here's a little snippet from James Seifert. He asked BlackRock's head of digital assets, Robert Michnik, when he thought the large banks might open the floodgates. This Robert expects the fourth quarter. Certainly this year is likely, he said. It's unclear when the other large banks, including Goldman Sachs, JPM, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, plan to change their policies to follow suit in soliciting clients. But for now, according to CNBC, they still follow the policy that advisors will only sell Bitcoin ETFs to clients if they ask. They aren't even advertising this. They aren't even mentioning it to their clients. The clients have to ask the advisors, not the other way around. And this is going to change. We also have some news from Michael Saylor. He announced his personal Bitcoin holdings. He holds over $1 billion in Bitcoin. And maybe we can try to be more like Michael Saylor. I haven't sold any Bitcoin. I continue to acquire more Bitcoin. It's a great capital investment asset for any individual, a family, an institution, corporation, or a country. And I can't see a better place to put my money. He continues on and describes Bitcoin as the most desirable property in the universe. And when you look at its performance so far, I gotta agree. We also have recent news that a British hedge fund has been just gobbling up Bitcoin to the tune of $464 million. We also have some ETH news. BlackRock's Ethereum Trust has amassed nearly $900 million in inflows since its launch, becoming one of 2024's top performing ETFs. And its performance puts it among the top six best performing ETFs in 2024. And just the other day on August 6, ETH A recorded $109 million in inflows, which is its third biggest flow day since inception. It's only been 11 days. This surge brought its total inflows to 869 million. After Crypto Black Monday, where ETH A took in nearly 50 mil, it vacuums up approximately 110 mil today. He's talking about yesterday. That 160 million alone would put it in the top 10% of all new ETFs this year. ETH A is now nearing 900 million inflows two weeks in. Top six ETF launch in 2024, four out of five others are spot Bitcoin ETFs. And I wanna show you something interesting also. You'll notice that grayscale, the selling is diminishing. We were in the 300s, 400s in the beginning. Now, early August, you know, we were up towards 100. Now we're getting down in under 50 million outflows. 78 million, August 1, August 2, 61, August 5, 46, August 6, 39 million. It is diminishing at a pretty steady pace. Hopefully we don't see it tick up. Hopefully we see it come down to zero, maybe even start seeing inflows into Grayscale's Spot Ethereum ETF. Now I did want to bring up Bitcoin. We did break our pattern. I showed you guys this yesterday. This is invalidated, so let's get rid of this. What I've been seeing is this kind of a broadening, descending pattern. Our range has been increasing. We've been getting a little more volatile, a little bit of a longer range, and it's creating this kind of a broadening pattern. Now looking at this long-term upward trend line, it's looking a lot more possible that we're gonna bounce off of it. Maybe by sometime in October, we're down in the 40,000s and we get a nice bounce and we go on to rally. Like I showed you guys yesterday, you know, these 30% plus corrections are very normal. We have seen it in every past cycle and we shouldn't expect any different here. There are going to be shakeouts. There are going to be amazing buying opportunities while other people fear away and run away. You want to be running towards it, at least if you're at the right time in the cycle. While it is positive that Bitcoin uh, reached oversold on the daily and bounced. If you look at past times that we were oversold, this was very short-lived in our overall bull market. You usually want to take advantage when things are in the extremes. Just realize that on the weekly, we definitely have more room to drop. You'll see on the monthly that there is obviously a lot of room to the downside. Just because you see an oversold four hour daily doesn't mean we can't drop more after a potential small bounce or something. But what I do want to remind you guys is, in my opinion, we haven't topped out. Look at this on the monthly. Look at the RSI. This is the weakest Bitcoin cycle in history if we topped out here. 
in my opinion, we have not. Now, I might be singing a different tune if we were in the year 2025. We're talking like in towards summer of 2025. I would be like, you know what, maybe it's time to exit. But we're in the year 2024. We just got through the halving only months ago. We haven't even felt our supply shock yet, in my opinion. We continue to hear about these overall inflows from the spot Bitcoin ETFs. We're finally getting our skeletons out of the closet, so to speak. We're giving our payments to Mt. Gox. That's getting out of the way. Soon that's going to be a non-issue anymore. Of course, the Genesis repayments. One thing to realize is if we do sell off a bit more, we might get our death cross. That might bring some more fear. If we're, like I said, if we're getting into 2025 and things aren't looking much better, then I would be worried. But to me, this is just going to be another blip in the radar. Kind of like this pullback here that people forget about. Or this pullback here right after the spot Bitcoin ETF launch. Remember everyone said, oh, Wall Street's just going to ruin it. It's going to be a big sell off. This was the top. Remember that, guys, when everyone said this was the top at 49,000 or so? And then we ran all the way down to 38,000, went on to rally into the 70,000s in a matter of weeks. Bitcoin goes to the extremes. We go to oversold, overbought. We get extreme fear, extreme greed. You just have to keep your emotions in check. Remember that this is one of the most valuable assets you can own. And if you follow the cycle, we are in the prime time to be in Bitcoin. How are you feeling about Bitcoin lately? Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Do you think the top is in? You'd be surprised how many people I have heard say the top is in. It's always possible that the cycle plays out differently and just things are very terrible this time. But in reality, if you see Bitcoin as a long-term asset, you can't lose. Let me know what you guys are buying today. What Bitcoin miners are you buying today? I don't think you need to rack your brain about it. The vast majority of these miners, in my opinion, are buys. Get ready for CleanSparks earnings tomorrow. I'll try to cover it. Thanks as always for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.